Hi, good afternoon, everybody. Um, welcome to this panel discussion this afternoon. It's actually pretty amazing what you'll go to to be able to take your mask off and be able to speak to people. Um, and so it's an absolute delight to be here today. Um, I'm James McLeod, Director of Community at Finos. Um, and we're here today to talk about getting the most out of every dollar spent in the cloud. Um, but before we actually uh, start going into the panel discussion, I'd like to um, introduce um, Jen um, and also Udam. Um, if you would like to introduce yourselves and let the audience know, you know who you are and what you do and what we're going to be discussing today. Great. Thank you, James. Um, my name is Jennifer Hayes. I work for Fidelity Investments. Um, I am also a chairperson of the governance board of the FinOps Foundation. And as a member of the FinOps Foundation governance board, I am actually a practitioner member. So I represent the practitioner community. Um, and so within Fidelity Investments, I um, helped establish the first FinOps organization within Fidelity um, and have helped run it for the last two and a half years. Hi, and uh, I'm Udam Devaraja. I'm the head of cloud financial management for Citi. Uh, at Citi, what we're doing is uh, building an infrastructure, cloud infrastructure platform uh, that goes across multiple cloud vendors and SaaS vendors and incorporates in governance and observability and SDLC and all these things. So uh, my team builds a lot of the financial management uh, related features for, for the platform. That's amazing. Um... What I'd like to do is um, ask people, if you have any questions, we're going to actually make some time at the end. So store all of your questions up. When we get to the end of um, the panel discussion, feel free to put your hands up you know, and, and ask us then, and we'll be able to answer for you. Um, so leading into the discussion, Jen, I believe that you're going to run through uh, what FinOps is. Um, yeah. Thanks, James. So FinOps, we've got the slide here for you, and um, it is really an evolving set of cloud financial practices and processes and procedures that bring together a group of people, three different types of roles within the organization, your financial organizations, your technology organizations, and your business organizations to collaborate and make data-driven decisions based on how to get the most value out of the money, that, out of what you spend in the cloud. Um, the, the, the real purpose of FinOps and the, the goal at the end of the day is that when you're spending money in the cloud, it's not about necessarily reducing what you're going to be spending on. It's about choosing the appropriate place to, to spend your money on, making sure that you have the most discounts available to you as an organization, that you're working, um, you're managing your workload and your, your resources so that you're not over-provisioning. So you're really talking about it from the beginning of um, the process, which is procuring and uh, deploying resources and doing that appropriately, all the way to the financial aspect about it, which making sure that you are not overpaying for those resources when you do, when you do them. FinOps itself, we think of it in kind of four different ways. We have a set of best practices and principles that we bring to play every time we think about um, how we want to set up a FinOps organization. There are a different type of personas who will play within the FinOps um, organization, within, within your group. And there are different phases by which we go through. First, we'll talk about the principles itself. So from a principle standpoint, this team, is, um, this team has all of these different personas, the business, the technical groups, the procurement groups, and the financial organizations. It is important that they communicate and collaborate together and create a common understanding of how they're going to pursue cloud spend. Everyone in the organization takes ownership for cloud usage. Traditionally, what you used to see is that small groups within different organizations made key decisions about procurement and cost of IT. That no longer comes into play. Within the um, FinOps, or I apologize, within cloud-based organizations, um, what you actually have is that every person who is able to deploy to the cloud is actually able to make a procurement decision for you. And so it's really important that you change the culture of an organization and really have it focused on cloud usage um, and the, the ownership of cloud usage. We do recommend a centralized team within the FinOps community um, that helps drive these principles throughout the organization and the culture change that needs to happen with it. And that at the end of the day, 
decisions are business decisions. They shouldn't be made from a technology standpoint. They shouldn't be made from a financial standpoint. We should be bringing information together that allows the business to make the, the right decision for the organization itself. And really be able to take advantage of the variable cost nature of the cloud. So how do you use that as a business advantage versus it actually um, bringing more overhead to your, your organization? One of the key statistics right now is that 35 to 45% of all consumers of AWS overspend, over-provision on their cloud. And so this is really the, the, the key underlying principle to the FinOps. Thank you very much, Jen. That was um, a very um, good overview. Um, so, Udam, um, now that we have a basic understanding of FinOps, can you tell us what value it brings to financial services organizations like Citi? Yeah, I'd say FinOps is critically important for any organization looking to operate uh, in the cloud to gain that efficiency, a lot of the things that, that Jen talked about here, right? Uh, but especially for larger organizations, uh, there's a lot more complexity uh, because of different legal entities or lines of businesses or countries. So um, having FinOps, which has these uh, best practices really helps them, the organization go from uh, maybe a place where they weren't so uh, familiar with the cloud to uh, operating very efficiently in the cloud. Um, so I would say having that, you know, I call it a, a GPS for, for uh, cloud financial management, right? Because it really helps teams navigate um, that this new environment that, that they're getting into where things are very different, right? Uh, you have the variable spend model, uh, you want to provide things like um, the visibility uh, into costs and usage all the way down to the, the edges of your business. These things are new concepts for, for these larger organizations. So, uh, and also the, the collaboration that, that Jen mentioned, right? Like that's, that's a new thing because generally you had those conversations maybe twice a year, once a year when it was time for, to do budgeting. Uh, with, with cloud, you want to have that continuously, and you want that to be a value-based discussion uh, that, that engineering, uh, the business organization, and uh, finance is having, uh, you know, because your usage is going to, you know, evolve and, and change frequently. So with that description, would you say that FinOps actually removes organizational silos? I would definitely uh, agree with that, yes. That's brilliant. So Jen, who in the organization should be involved in FinOps? So we talked about the personas already, right? Um, and that's a really important piece, that there are different groups that have different levels of needs out of the FinOps organization, right? Um, and when we talk about where it should reside within an organization also, usually what ends up happening with it within an organization is you have multiple people start to think about cloud costs, right, and how to manage it. The finance groups tend to be very concerned about it. They feel like they're losing fiduciary control over because due to the variable spend and the nature of it, um, their, their current controls and their processes aren't really good at actually dealing with on-demand resources that result in variable spend. So you start to feel, the finance organizations start to feel anxiety actually about moving to the cloud. And you probably have all experienced that with your, your finance organizations. The technology organizations, of course, they see all the advantages of the, the technology itself. But you'll start to see the CIOs and the executives within in the technology organizations begin to be concerned not only about the budget and the cost of it, but over provisioning of resources too. Um, and, and how you can actually start to leverage the information. And so what we see is that in general, um, in many different organizations, technology and finance is the place that it, these start to, um, to funnel up with each other. Um, and you can actually see in different organizations, um, the FinOps um, either reside in the finance or the technology groups. And they will tend to then to lean on what type of um, activity that they want to focus on first. If, you, if they're in the technology organizations, they will lead to resource utilization and usage and, um, and how to control that portion of it. And if you see them bubble up in the finance organizations, they would tend to think about how do we do budgets and how do we do um, allocation of resources or cost back to the, the appropriate business units. Um, how do we reduce that cost, right? They're re they'll be really focused. The best type of organizations probably 
bring those collaborations together. And actually what we did within our own organization was um, had co-sponsors from both the finance and the technology organization to help manage um, and, you know, and make sure that we didn't go one extreme over the other to break down those silos. That's awesome. So we were talking earlier, so both myself and Adam were speaking about the um, similarities that FinOps could have to an open source program office. Um, where you have different people from across the organization coming together in order to remove blockers you know, from that aspect of the organization. Would you say that FinOps is, is similar to that you know, type of self-organizing coming together of different stakeholders? It really is, it's, and it's one of the big principles of this, right? And um, Udam talked about how it breaks down these silos, and that's what you want to have happen. One of the things that when we start to educate people on FinOps that we focus on first is actually creating common language between the two different groups, because one, there is a completely new language that comes up with the cloud um, versus on-premise and technology resources, and two, you need both the finance organization and the technology organization to understand what each of them needs in order for this to be successful. Because if, it, if you don't have collaboration on this, you know, um, we, we have seen places of where if the finance organization tries to control things too much, right, they try to limit the amount of, and the usage of innovation and the usage of the, the cloud-based resources, and that's not actually what you want. You want them to be informed and understand the value that these things bring, and then they can bring their, um, their set of skill set to help reduce cost in these different areas too. So being part of digital transformation and you know, seeing how Agile and DevOps actually transforms um, a, a big enterprise in terms of culture, would you say that you know, bringing um, FinOps into an organization also you know, has an unintended consequence you know, of changing the culture of an organization? I would agree with that. I, I think, I mean, the, the collaboration piece, to, not to harp on that, but, but that really is uh, core to FinOps, and, and that, I think, then leads to people having value-based discussions uh, in, their, in their organization, right? Because we're always strapped for resources, always, uh, you know, having too many things to do in engineering. But if you can have this uh, kind of data-driven decision-making, then you really end up having, uh, you know, better decisions made for your business. And to build on that too, you know, one of the nice things about what Agile and DevOps brings to an environment, brings to organizations, right, is their ability to increase velocity. And um, finance decisions have traditionally been very long in the making, right? They, budgets are done once a year. You do these very long studies to see um, whether or not you should spend money. The cloud, as all of you know, the transparency of cost is, is amazing, right? And the real timeness. So um, we tend to get you know, um, updates even during the day about our usage. Um, they build based on sometimes seconds or fractions of seconds of cost. And so there's this, this amazing amount of data that is given in near real time that you can make decisions on. And so one of the greatest thing about FinOps is really moving that whole timetable forward and really thinking in a very agile organization of how do you bring finance into a very, really agile organization and make good cost um, decisions based on near time decisions. Absolutely. I remember um, previously we were talking about accountability um, and how FinOps actually brings accountability into teams, you know, who are actually developing and engineering, you know, with cloud um, native solutions. Can you tell me how that is different from a CIO who's doing upfront budget budgeting, you know, compared to implementing FinOps, you know, where you, you've got near real-time data, you know, and the ability to adapt fast to, you know, um, impact and change within your, um, within your application? I mean, I, I would say the, the iterative approach uh, emphasized here is, is really key to that, right? Because as you're getting this data, you're iteratively being able to, you know, make changes to your plans, right? And as a, uh, and I understand, like, there is an importance to that upfront planning, uh, but that planning also needs to account for the fact that your business needs, you know, change. Uh, your engineering uh, solutions might change. So having this uh, visibility, I, I think, is super critical. Uh, you know, for the, this kind of 
uh, change when it's happening in your organizations. Yeah, I would also say that one of the, um, the ideal situations, right, is unit-based um, metrics and economy with the cloud. And it's really being able to understand and make good decisions on real information about the cost of something. So traditional data centers, um, they tend to, you procure and you're having to take those costs for years, if not decades. Um, with cloud, of course, you can, they're on-demand resources, um, and depending on the way you purchase RIs and that, you're, you're really talking about short-term costs. Um, and so the, 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 one of the most, pr the proudest days that I had with InfinOps was meeting with a squad who was doing development work. And they actually measured the cost of their um, resources and their unit transaction um, before and after a release, every single time, before and after a release. And so they understand what that release caused from a cost standpoint, if they got, gained an efficiency out of it, which most of the time they did gain an efficiency out of it, but a couple times it increased their cost and whether or not there was enough value that was being delivered from that release. And so there were times when they can back out releases because of the, the cost um, was not enough valuable. It was value. So this is actually where you want teams to get to. That is a perfect union of the technologists, the business need, and the finance behind it, right? They're, and I've got to say that most engineers, once they understand that they can actually impact cost decisions, mm -hmm. become very engaged with FinOps. Um, you know, so so that, that control that they've never had on premise is, is great. And that, that leads to what the CEO needs. That leads to what those product area and delivery needs is understanding the, what th their products are actually costing. And when Jen talked about the, the granularity of this, uh, you know, the cost data that comes out of the cloud vendors, like it, part of this is also to adjust that granularity to appeal to the different uh, audiences that, that, that look at this data. So the finance folks may not necessarily care about the granular details of every instance or every database or, or you know, the network charge that happened yesterday, <clears throat> whereas the engineer really does care about this. So uh, it's important to understand the layers uh, in this and, and aggregate to the right level so that people can get the right value out of this data, yeah. right? So where you were talking about a squad, you know, measuring, you know, the before and after effects of, you know, making a change. Is FinOps something that you would put like on a screen, you know, with your squad, like with agile metrics to measure, like burn down charts, you know, and, you know, other um, cycle times and lead times for, for engineering? Is it something that can count towards your success? It, it is. Um, and so, you know, there are different, um, you, you once asked about the challenges, right? There are different opportunities and challenges with this understanding and breaking down cost to the right persona, to the right person, so that you're, you're showing them what they actually need to make the decisions that they need to make um, to take their ownership of usage. Um, and so we, uh, we use a external um, vendor for our data platform because the amount of data, if anyone's seen the AWS files or the Google, right, is, is a tremendous amount of data. And so we take that data and we present it in ways for each of these different personas and what they need to do. And that should be a different part. So again, what we would like to see in their natural routines is that they check their usage, they check and see whether they've cleaned up their development environments, whether or not they're launching things within spot usages or um, whether they're covered under reserved instances and things like that. So they can make decisions that are based on what they need. Um, and you want to see this in a fairly consistent routine, whether it's a weekly routine, you know, or, or something even, um, you know, depending on the persona, how often it needs to occur. That's fantastic. I would add just one point to that. It, it's also the trend that, that's yeah. important. Um, you want to look at this data instantaneously, but you also want to see, is my team trending in the right direction? Because it is overwhelming when you see that, hey, 30%, 40% of my spend is being wasted. But you want to understand, is it going in the right direction or the wrong direction? Uh, because then, you know, it's not always possible to get down to zero for, uh, you know, optimization like savings, at least in, a, uh, in an efficient manner because you're prioritizing other things. But you might at least want to know that you're not making the problem worse uh, as you, you know, keep using the cloud. And I'm going to just add one more thing, I know. Um, 
one of the things that is really important here is anomaly detection. So mm. trending is actually really important in, the, in, this, um, in this space. So you understand when you're going to see increases in spend and when you're not, and what your normal trend is. So anomaly detection is really good, and, and there are a million different reasons of why you could actually have anomalies happen. And so one time um, we had someone misuse a service, actually wrote um, the coding wrong and was calling the service a thousand times more often than you needed to, which just generated this huge increase in cost, right? And then it ran over the weekend, and of course uh, we continued to pay for that resources. But by having anomaly detection there, right, based on the trends, you go through and you detect this and you can cut that off as soon as possible. Finance is worth, you know, uh, when people were moving to the cloud, they all heard stories about, you know, millions of dollars worth of bills that they didn't expect because of resources using that it wasn't required. Um, but I will also say the second reason is, is that um, unpredicted usage of resources is actually also being used as um, indicators of possible data breaches, too, um, and breaches within your environments. And so having that anomaly detection is tells you when your resources aren't being used internally or externally by the, the right people. So. so briefly, now that we're into the last 10 minutes, um, can you tell us you know, how Fidelity and also how City are actually using FinOps and maybe some of the challenges that you've actually overcome whilst using it? I'll, <laughs> I feel like I've talked a lot, but um, <laughs> so Fidelity itself, um, we are a privately held company. We have um, 16 different business units-ish, um, and each of those different business units actually maintain their own um, budget. They maintain and direct their own technology resources. Um, and so when you have this type of model, which you get traditionally with these large enterprises um, have a lot of these different business units, you want to be able to continue to give accountability where accountability needs to happen, right? Um, but you also want to, to, to work together as a group in order to get the most out of some of the, like, the um, pre-purchasing and other sort of decisions that you're making. And so what we decided to do was a, a hub and spoke model. Right, so you have um, a central organization that we have, um, is, it's a virtual team. It is made up of people from each of those major business units, the, the larger business units. And we actually work in a um, contribution type of model actually within it. Um, it is led by both a person from a business unit and a person from the center so that we get both of those perspectives. Um, and what we do is we, we talk about all the different opportunities that we have and assign them out to the business unit that is most close or would benefit the most from doing this. And so if, if we brought on an, an additional cloud service provider, whichever business unit was gonna be using that cloud service provider would be the one to take the lead and then contribute back to everyone else. And so this model has worked really well um, with, with us because it, Again, one of the principles here, right, is everyone takes ownership for their cloud usage. So the business units still have to take ownership for their cloud usage. And they have to take ownership for implementing the right sort of policies and processes in place um, and, you know, and that yet contribute back to the larger enterprise as a whole. Yeah, I mean, a lot of the same uh, at CD2. We uh, organizationally, uh, so I report to the head of public cloud. So Cloud Financials has a seat at the table for uh, all you know, all the things that we want to drive, uh, but from an implementation perspective, I'd say you know we're doing the visibility aspect first, right? That's first and foremost in this. I think uh, if you can't give visibility to to your engineers that are using the, the cloud, you cannot drive accountability, right? So uh, we're tackling that first. We're also tackling kind of the the budgeting process uh, to sort of say that, look, you know, we're in the early stages of this. We can't expect applications coming into the cloud uh, to know how much they're going to spend in 2022 in, like, July of 2021, right? So instead, we're going to a more iterative approach for that of uh, get into the cloud, start using it, start building your solution, incur costs, then from there project out to what your production workload might look like and what other regions might look like uh, in terms of cost so that you can get a better, more accurate uh, estimate uh, and a forecast for, for your usage. 
Um, so yeah, I mean, obviously there's also optimization related things. We wanna integrate these optimization recommendations uh, sometimes from the cloud vendors, sometimes from third party tools directly into the, uh, the developer's SDLC processes, right? Uh, them being there in a tool is great, but then you know, if nobody looks at it, then they don't get action. So instead, if they can directly be incorporated into their development process, then these things get prioritized just like the, the rest of their uh, engineering work. So those are some of the ways that we're... So I'm, I'm gonna have one more thing about it because I think both City and Fidelity did it very similar to is that you know, down at the bottom here, is there's these different domains, and there's best practices from FinOps for each of these different things. Um, but there's also something at the top that says crawl, walk, and run. Mm -hmm. um, and so what we decided to do was not tackle all of these domains at one time. We put our focused energy, first of all, of where we could make the most impact with the smallest number of people, because culture change takes a lot longer than that. And so for us, we came through and said, okay, understanding cl um, cloud usage and cost is, is fundamental to all of this. But really then going to cloud rate optimization and organizational alignment was the, the key pieces for us. So we spent the first year and a half really focused on those things and doing it really well. And then we started to go into the next domain area, which was cloud usage optimization, which is actually harder to do, involves a lot more people, um, and, you, uh, and the return on it is smaller. So Jen, within the last few minutes, um, you mentioned that FinOps is actually an open source framework. Can you explain what this means and how organizations can get involved and maybe you know, ask more questions and learn more? Definitely. Um, so I'm passionate for an advocate. I, I, I reached out to like JR who, who helped really, um, and he, he's out there, who helped create this foundation um, because I wanted to participate in it, right? So, Two and a half years ago, three years ago, I was Googling and did like cloud optimization and that his book came up in it, and then we, we started to learn more and more about the practice and, and become engaged. So FinOps is part of the, the Linux Foundation. Um, it has 4,400 active practitioners right now um, and it is an open source, open contribution type of model. And so from those 4,400 we have, um, I'm gonna hopefully get the numbers right, we have 18 different SIGs that you can participate in and we have a number of different open projects right now. Um, FinOps does this great thing is every year they take a survey of all of the practitioners and they ask what is the thing that you're struggling most with? Um, and based on that, they, can, they open up a, near, a series of projects. And so some of the projects that you could participate in right now is how do you get engineers engaged to doing cost optimization, to doing resource optimization? How do you do share, um, cost, shared cost and um, cloud container cost, Kubernetes? How do you actually take that environment and get it back to the, the people who are actually consuming it? So they really listen to the practitioners um, and they allow them to drive the next set of projects that are opened up and then all of those practitioners are able to do it. They also allow certifications because one of the other goals is really to promote this, practition, um, this practice and the practitioners themselves. And so they're, um, they've developed a certification. There are multiple other certifications being developed right now and training and personas. So it is really about supporting this community. That's amazing. We now have just under a couple of minutes um, to take some questions from the audience if um, people want to put their hands up and maybe ask the panel. Alessandro. Yeah, thank you. Thank you very much. That was great. Um, uh, I'm sure that uh, while you were working on the cost, you found new cost, right? The cloud, the data transfer. Can you tell us more about what you found that maybe we didn't find before? Because moving data in the, in the back can cost us anything in theory, right? Now all of a sudden you have to pay off. So the nice thing about the transparency of those bills, right, is that it has everything in there. I will say that when we were doing business cases to moving to the cloud, there were costs that we didn't assume, right, when we were creating the business cases. And then when you start to see the bills, you start to understand what it is. Um, and then you have to, you know, for us, we look at the different costs and we, um, our, our best tool to use is the engineering, the architecture community when really d dealing with those costs. So we talk, we talk to them um, and bring information to the table to help them then make the determination about the right way to um, design an application or to design an, um, a transaction so that that cost gets reduced and yet doesn't impact the, the service level agreements or, or anything with it. So our goal is never to tell anyone no. You, you, what you're doing is too expensive. 
Our goal is to have a meaningful conversation where we're bringing data to the table and then ask people to think about things in a different way. A lot of other things that happen on the cloud that you don't get on premise is there is so many more, much more access to different types of services and service level agreements that sometimes architects and engineers come in with one viewpoint of how they're going to solve a problem. And by having the discussion, you're opening them up to all these other things. Well, maybe I could use this other service, or maybe I could archive this, or those type of things, and really pushing the architecture to use a lot more of those cloud native services. That's amazing. We're out of time now. Thank you very much for that question. Um, Jennifer and, and, sorry, we're unable to take that, but I was gonna actually ask, maybe um, if I, you can hang around outside. I will definitely Maybe we can around. take a few more questions. Yeah. So thank you everybody for being here this afternoon to learn more about FinOps. Um, thank you, Jen, and thank you, Udam, for being here. And enjoy the rest of um, OSSF. Thank you, everybody. <laughs>